Hello. In this episode, I'll be explaining why I believe this particular mural of the goddess Nut has been designed to illustrate the principles of the electric universe theory. The electric universe theory is an alternative cosmological model which suggests that electricity plays the major role in the universe's structure and behavior, rather than gravity being the dominant force. The theory is influenced by ideas that were first proposed by Nobel Prize-winning physicist Hannes Alphen, who developed the field of plasma cosmology in the 60s and 70s. The electric universe theory expands on those ideas. So first, let's take a look at this mural. The goddess Nut is the sky goddess and she's associated with the cosmos. If you recall, I previously explained why I believe this zigzag hieroglyph is the symbol for electricity. As you can see, it appears four times on Nut's body. Or to be more precise, there's two pairs and they're running from her shoulder to her ankle. In the human body, the bones in the legs are denser than the bones in the arms. This density gradient is due to the mechanical load that the legs support. So the electricity symbols on Nut's body that are running from her shoulders to her ankles are in other words moving from a less dense area to a denser area. As the symbols reach her lower limbs they constrict and come closer together. Also note how there's a cluster of stars in front of Nut's face and another cluster near her feet. The four electricity symbols are not only running from a less dense to a denser area, they're also connecting two separate star clusters or galaxies. If you look at the center of the four electricity symbols, you'll see a line of snowflake-like symbols, which I think are supposed to represent different types of matter which have been drawn into the center by the electrogravitic effect. If you notice around Nut's legs, there's a shining sun. And if you look at the front of her lower shin, there's a second star that looks like it's coming out of the electricity symbol. So to quickly recap, there's two pairs of electricity symbols running from one galaxy to another. There's a line of matter at the center of the electricity symbols. As the two pairs of electricity symbols reach the denser lower limbs, they come closer together and there's two suns, one shining and one about to be released from the electricity symbol. Now take a listen to how Wallace Thornhill described the electric universe theory. In the electric universe, galaxies are an electromagnetic phenomenon, not a gravitational phenomenon. Once you accept electrical activity and electric circuits in space, you realize that we have an entirely different mechanism for forming stars. We're not talking about gravity anymore, we're talking about electric currents. Electric currents in space take a form known as Birkeland currents, which is twin filaments. In deep space, the amount of matter per cubic meter is extremely low. It's the best vacuum that we know of. An electric current flowing in deep space in between galaxies or between stars can only carry very little current. But the sheer size of these current filaments can be light years across, when the filaments arrive at a cloud of denser material. The effect is to cause the current to constrict. It's called the electromagnetic pinch effect. As the filaments become narrower if there's sufficient material, the current density gets to the point where atoms begin to give off light. The pinch effect is one which allows the electric current to draw inward surrounding material, and it does it more effectively than gravity, because it's doing it along a line and not from a point. It collects material very well. It's an extremely good vacuum cleaner. All the material needed to make stars and planets are drawn together along this filament. Our sun was formed along one of these filaments. As it turns out, because they're twin filaments, it's usually a pair of stars at the same time. It's known by astronomers that binary stars are present in remarkable numbers, and it's always been a puzzle. Once the stars have formed, they become heavy, and the filaments, just like in a novelty plasma ball, are moving, snaking about, and at some point the stars are left behind, and the filament moves on. Stars being an electrical phenomenon, they continue to shine because the electric current flowing through these clouds is everywhere. There are minor filaments alongside major ones. 
so the stars then shine according to their environment. What are your thoughts? Do you think the ancient Egyptians believed in the electric universe theory? For anyone interested in watching the full Wallace Thornhill interview that I was quoting from, there's a link to it in my posts section. And that's all for now. Thank you, and goodbye.